Sign spinning! Small businesses have used this tactic to draw people's attention, and all it costs them is their employees' dignity. Funny enough it works though, the unexpected motion on the side of the road turns people's heads. So what if we use sign spinning to help us with our website? Here's my thinking. Typically on a marketing site, there's a call to action, buy now, get started, log in, that sort of thing. These are generally buttons placed prominently within the main page of the site. This is what the site wants the user to click on. So what if, follow me on this, we make the button spin a sign, get people's attention and get that sweet, sweet clicks. But you ask, how the heck are we gonna do that? Well, here's my five part plan to make it happen. Step one, we only want the button to spin the sign when the mouse is close. So we need to track how far the user's mouse is away from the button. Step two, once the user gets close enough, we can trigger our sweet animation to start. Step three, it'll randomly spin the sign in a couple different ways. Step four, if the user moves the mouse away from the button, we want to hide the sign. And finally, step five, drop it. This is a little bit of a tricky build, but worth it, I think. The end results will speak for themselves. And with that, let's dive in. Okay, let's first figure out how to trigger our animation when our mouse is a certain distance away from the button. And to do that, we're gonna need a global state. So I just created an object called state and it has an approaching. So as the mouse distance away from the button is less than a certain value, we're gonna change this approaching to true. Now for us to trigger an animation for when the approaching changes from false to true or from true to false, we need to listen to when it changes. Because we're using plain old JavaScript, we can create a proxy. This allows us to call a function when we set something in our, our state object. So if we look at this function, we have a target, key, and value. The target is our object. The key is the approaching and the value is what we're gonna be setting it to. So we have an if statement here. We're checking to see if the target is not equal to the value, so if we're changing the value from false to true, then we're going to assign that value. This is just replicating the same functionality that happens when you normally set a value in an object. But that also gives us the opportunity to trigger the animation after this. We'll do that a bit later, but for now we have this state proxy set up. And whenever we want to change the state, we just update this state proxy instead. Then we just create an event listener for the mouse move. And we just track the mouse's X and Y. Then we figure out the distance from the mouse to the button by using math hypotenuse. And then if the distance is less than our constant here, approaching distance, and in this case it's set to 400, then we set the state proxy approaching to true. Otherwise we set it to false. Okay, we know how far the mouse is away from the button. Now we are going to trigger our animation. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to update our state to have a couple more properties. There's going to be an is hidden and an is idle. This is because our animation has two states. Is hidden is when the sign is not visible and is idle is when it is visible, but it's not really animating. He's not spinning the sign. He's just kind of idle sitting there holding the sign. So we're going to manage this state to determine whether we should animate or not. So in the state proxy, we're going to be calling an is ready for animation and we're passing the key. So that's the property that's changing inside of the state. And for this instance, all we care about is the idle property. So when we create our is ready for animation, the key is is idle. So if it's entering the idle state or if it's leaving the idle state, we want to be able to determine whether it's ready for the animation or not. And all we do is we check the state to see if it's idle and if the mouse is close enough with our state approaching. And then from there, we're going to get a random animation and then fire off that animation. Before we get into the get random animation function, we have to create a variable first to hold all of our animations. And these are just the animations that are of the actual sign spinning. So we're gonna hold all those in a variable. I created a variable called look at me, and then we would populate that full of our animations once we have them. Looking at the get random animation, we are pulling an animation out of the look at me, and inside of there is just pulling a random animation from that array essentially. And then we just fire off the animation. I'll get into populating that look at me array in a bit, 
but just know the animations themselves has a fire function in them that will trigger the animation to fire off. After we fire off our animation, it's no longer idle, so we want to set the isIdle property to false in our state. So once we get our animation set up, whenever it goes to that idle state, it's going to trigger the changing of this isIdle property back to true, and it's going to create a loop. So whenever the user's mouse is close enough, it's going to fire off an animation. The animation is going to finish. It's going to trigger the is idle to be true again. And then it's going to start over again. It's going to fire off this animation and go for a loop until the user leaves the approaching area. We need to hide and show our sign when a user leaves or enters the approaching area. So one thing you need to know about the animations is they have a bunch of triggers inside them. Two of them are which are hiding and emerging. So th those are just animations of picking up the sign and, and bringing it out or taking the sign and hiding it away. Now we're gonna create a loop that essentially checks to see at any given point, should the sign be out or should the sign be in. Now for convenience, we created a triggers variable. This is gonna hold all the animations, including hide and emerge. And we'll get to populating it a bit later on when we set up our animations. And then we're gonna create a check visibility function. And inside of there, we're just going to have a request animation frame, which is going to call check visibility once again. And this is just gonna be a loop. And then we have an if statement that says, if it should be hidden, and then we're gonna trigger off the hide. Else if, if it should be visible, we're gonna trigger the emerge. So looking at the should be hidden function, we're checking to see that the state is idle. So the animation isn't moving. The guy is just holding the sign still and the user is no longer in the approaching area. And for should be visible, the user's mouse is in the approaching area and the sign is hidden. And with this, this should handle hiding and showing of the sign. Then we're free to actually animate it, spin it and that sort of thing. For the animations, I used a app called Rive. Let me go to rive.app, you can check it out. It's just a handy tool to allow you to animate things with keyframes, and they also have a state machine, which allows you to trigger things based on inputs and stuff like that. So this is what Rive looks like. I'm not gonna get too much into how things look, but this is more or less the state machine, and you can play your animation. And based on the inputs, you can click on, say, Merge, and the animation of emerging comes out, or I can hide it. And based on different states, I can do different animations. So when it's emerged, I can either spin the sign, make the sign point, or rotate it. So these are the triggers that are going to be available to us inside of our code. To set up Rive, the Rive needs a canvas to put its animations in. So we're going to create a Rive canvas here. And then we're also gonna create a container wrapping it. And this is because what our plan is, is to have our animation sit behind an actual HTML button and the arms are going to emerge from behind that button. If we look inside of our create canvas and inside of our create container, Everything in there is just to resize it and position it so that it's behind that button. And then after we created our canvas, we call our setup rive function. We created a setup rive function, which is going to initiate the rive animations that we've created. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but just know that rive exports a .riv file and you just put that in with your project. Uh, and when you're referencing it, you just point to that RIV file. I'll leave a link in the description below to Rive's documentation. Most of the code here is just boilerplate code from their site. Now, what's important about this is our onload. We created a Rive onload function. So inside the Rive onload function, we're going to get all the inputs from the state machine, which is all of these. The rotate sign, point sign, spin sign, hide, and emerge. I and mean, we're gonna put those all inside of our triggers object. And then we're also going to populate our look at me array, which is just 
specifically taking the spin sign, rotate sign, and point sign. And from there, we're going to kick off our check visibility, which starts checking to see if the mouse is in the approaching area or not, and triggers the hide and the emerge. The other important aspect of this setup Rive function, we're listening to a Rive events, and then we're triggering the handle Rive event function. And inside of here, we are updating our state is hidden and is idle to true or false based on the event data that's passed in. So when the animation goes into the idle state, we are setting the state proxy is idle to true and the state proxy is, is hidden to false and vice versa for when the hidden event is triggered, we are setting is hidden to true and is idle to false. And that's all the code we need. So now we can check out the final result. As the mouse moves closer, the animation emerges and then we're in the idle state and then it starts triggering animations. Every time the animation finishes, it triggers the next animation. And then when we move our mouse out, it hides back in. Even if it's in the middle of an animation, because it's on a loop, when our mouse leaves, it'll then hide it. Now really this project was just meant to be for fun, but there are some things that we could learn from this. And that's motion draws the eye. And I think Rive did a pretty good job on their site. So if you hover over the get started button, you know, cat hand pops out and it follows your mouse around and it, it adds delight to your site. Now this might be a bit much for your marketing site, but having a little sparkles or any, any little bit of motion can really draw the person's eye to what you want. So I'll leave a link in the description below to the GitHub repo. Also, there's a GitHub page where you can try it out for yourself. Feel free to fork it, play around with it. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And if you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you next time.